Hello everyone and welcome once again to The View from the Midwest. It's time for another Bleeding Blue Playoff edition of our look at the NHL Central. So let's get things started off and we'll do so as we have for a while now with the Dallas Stars. Uh, the Dallas Stars are up 2 to nothing on the Minnesota Wild. Uh, Dallas ended up winning Game 1 in somewhat of a laugh or 4 to nothing. Uh, Minnesota did end up pulling their goaltender in the last few minutes. So that fourth goal was an empty net goal, so Devin Dubnik allowed three goals in that game. Minnesota was able to hold it much closer in the second game, but Dallas was still able to take both games in Dallas, so the Stars are currently up by a 2 to nothing series margin heading to the state of hockey. Uh, Dallas obviously won the top spot during the regular season, thus taking on the final wild card spot, which went to the Minnesota Wild, who somewhat backed their way in due to the fact that neither they nor the Colorado Avalanche could really win a game there at the end of the season. Uh, both of them going winless in the last week of the season, but Minnesota going into that week with the better record, and thus they get the last wild card spot. Uh, obviously, game one was a four to nothing score. Two to one was the score for Dallas in the second game. Dallas has uh, goals from uh, they have two goals for Jamie Ben and goals from Spetsa, Eves, Roussel, and Fasca. Minnesota is obviously zero and two in this series, as they are also a Central Division team. Uh, they've been struggling pretty much ever since the regular season ended, uh, going winless in that last week, as I mentioned, going winless, obviously, to start off the playoffs, uh, and it's just been kind of trouble for them to get things rolling. They're without Zach Parise right now. Uh, there's a small chance that he could come back once they return to Minnesota because heading into the series, they knew that he was going to miss at least the first two games. So now going back to Minnesota, they'll reevaluate him and see where he stands. But even coming back on that short of notice doesn't seem like it's going to bode very well for Minnesota, uh, despite the fact that the series is going up to St. Paul. Uh, Marco Scandella scored the lone goal for the Wild so far. Devin Dubnik has not played poorly. Uh, he has stopped uh, quite a few shots so far. Playing against the Dallas Stars, you're going to face a lot of shots. They've got a heck of an offense in Big D. But right now, Devin Dubnik is not doing quite enough to help his team win. Now, he's not going to shoulder this uh, playoff loss if that happens by himself, by any stretch of the imagination. But the way the Minnesota Wild are set up and the way they are playing right now and that they are shorthanded, he is going to have to really step up and do much better if the Minnesota Wild are going to complete a comeback and at least get one win at home. You have to win one win at home. Obviously, if you don't, you get swept. But you have to win at least one at home to keep the series alive and then just try to chip away one game at a time. It's very cliche, but that is the way that it is. Continuing around the Central Division, the Chicago Blackhawks are obviously down to the St. Louis Blues, two games to one as of making this video. Uh, they lost that game one on a David Backus tipping goal that was obviously deflected off the defenseman's stick, so a bit of fortune there for the St. Louis Blues. Obviously, the Blackhawks very disappointed to drop that game as they thought that they outplayed the St. Louis Blues, but you could kind of say the same thing that happened in game two. St. Louis looked like they outplayed Chicago. Chicago, and and then you had all the controversy with the officiating and what have you, and but Chicago deserved to win the game. Then Chicago put more goals in the back of the net. We can complain till the cows come home about officiating and consistency and all that kind of stuff, but ultimately Chicago did more within the confines of the game, and they deserve to win that game. St. Louis played better, but through the first two games, the team that played better didn't win. The team that played better in the third game did win. St. Louis really kind of just kept pushing, kept chipping away, despite the fact that they were down to Chicago. Roar Bacon 3 ended up in St. Louis's favor, obviously, again. So St. Louis, obviously, with the 2-1 to one series lead. Uh, Chicago has not played poorly by any stretch of the imagination. This game, or this series, excuse me, could honestly be one of the best NHL finals that we've seen in quite some time. And we're getting it in a conference quarterfinal matchup. So for, for Chicago and St. Louis, 
Um, somebody's going to be going home very disappointed. I know that if it's the Blues, I'm going to be extremely disappointed. I know if it's Chicago, they're going to be extremely disappointed because, that, number one, they're not used to being knocked out in the first round anymore. Number two, losing to your bitter rival is always a tough pill to swallow as well. But Chicago has gotten a decent amount of scoring despite the fact that these are two of the best defensive teams in the Stanley Cup playoffs right now. Uh, they've got no go nobody with the um, more than one goal, though, which is a little bit surprising. Patrick Kane has been held goalless so far. Chicago has got goals from Keith, Panarin, Shaw, Anisimov, and Seabrook. St. Louis Blues are obviously, as I mentioned, up 2-1 to one of the Blackhawks. You can get all their stats on the article that this video is with. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I encourage you to go to bleedingblue.com. Check out my article there. It's got all the Blues stats for the past week. Wrapping things up with the Nashville Predators, the Predators are surprisingly up two to nothing. Now, I'm not surprised that they've won a game, but they were playing both games on the West Coast, taking on a very big, a very physical Anaheim Ducks team, and the Predators have not backed down. The Predators are not necessarily as big as they used to be, but they're still one of those tough central division teams, and they have shown that so far, being very physical, not shying away from any of the contact. They're a little bit older than they have been in the past, especially with the addition of former Blue Barrett Jackman, but he has not made the mistakes that he had become synonymous with here in St. Louis, so he has not necessarily cost his team in the key situations that every once in a while he would do here in St. Louis. Uh, the Predators, obviously, I said, is our are up to, to nothing in the series. They've had to battle the entire way, though, but managed to win both games out on the coast by scores of 3-2. to two. The Predators have goals from Forsberg, Neal, Wilson, Craig Smith, Weber, and Eckholm. Pecorine has also outdueled John Gibson, which was not necessarily the way most prognosticators would have felt about that goaltending matchup going into this one. But Rene has stood up tall uh, in two straight games, stopping 27 of 29 shots in each game. It's been kind of interesting that you've had the same score in each game, and Anaheim has had the same number of shots in each game as well. So as we look forward... Uh, obviously, everybody is going to continue playing on this week. A little bit of prognostication on my point. Uh, I think the teams that are up two to nothing are not necessarily going to sweep. I think Dallas will sweep. I don't see Minnesota. Uh, maybe if they win game three, they could make a series out of it. If you don't win game three, I think that series is over. Dallas is just too talented. Minnesota too banged up going into the playoffs, not with enough momentum. Uh, I think Nashville is actually going to win that series. I think Na I think Anaheim's going to steal at least one game in Nashville, so that one's going to go at least five, in my opinion. But I think Nashville, now that they're up two to nothing, they've got a good stranglehold on that series, taking it back to home ice. Uh, St. Louis and Chicago, obviously you guys know who I'm going to pick to win that series, but I still don't know how many games it's going to take, because... If St. Louis wins both in Chicago, can they close it out at home? That's going to be incredibly difficult to do against a Chicago team that is not going to want to go quietly into the night. Uh, obviously, I still think St. Louis will win the series, especially now that they've taken that next step and gotten that second win. Uh, given the fact that it didn't come in the first two games, they've gotten that monkey off the back in getting the road win. But it's still going to be a tight, tight series. It's probably going to go six or seven, but the Blues still managed to pull it out by a squeaker. That is the view from the Midwest. What are your views on the games that have happened so far? What do you think about my predictions? Let me know in the comments section, whether it's on YouTube or on Bleeding Blue, Facebook, wherever you want to talk about it. Keep the conversation going. But keep it nice, people. I've seen this left and right. Obviously, this is a blues-centric page that I'm putting this video on, and I, I do put it on YouTube as well. But... There's so many trolls out there. If you're a Chicago fan, what are you doing on a Blues website anyway? I had a bunch of Blackhawks fans talking on Twitter the other day. And I, the, the only hashtag that I put on things is St. Louis Blues. So why are you going on their hashtag to troll people? It, I don't understand that mentality. But that's not who I am. If that's what you want to do, that's, that's your deal. Anyway. 
Comment, rate, and subscribe. Give us a follow. Follow BleedingBlue.com. Got good stuff going up there all the time. But until the next time, I'll see you then.